Hey, hey, this is TDA and welcome to our perfect ratio run. This is going to be a Dyson Sphere program let's play, but it, it's actually going to be quite a different let's play than my previous one. For those of you who watched my previous one or who didn't watch my previous one, that was focused around blueprints and getting stuff done fast. Pretty organized, I have to say. Um, I'm an actuary after all, so I like to be organized. But if you like organization, if you like perfect ratios in your builds, you are really going to like this run. Um, the whole thing will be focused on avoiding as much spaghetti as we can. So no spaghetti, preferably. It's going to be very intentional and organized in terms of what we build. And we are going to try to aim to build everything from scratch right to the end product. Why are we going to do it like that? Well... It avoids a lot of the problems that you can easily encounter in the end game, and we do really want to focus more on the end game in this let's play. Um, it avoids all kinds of bottlenecks that you can usually run into, where you kind of have to track down through your planet or even through your systems why a certain production is not doing what you want it to do. Um, but not only that, it will make it a lot easier for us to really scale up in the end game because of the way we're going to construct our builds and if that doesn't sound very clear to you now keep watching it will become clear quite quickly um it is a type of play style where you need to do a little bit more work up front in order to benefit from that in the end um, and of course yes i will be doing most of that work so if you just want to copy my blueprints there will be blueprints don't worry um but I will also kind of guide you through that process to see how I came to the build that I'm building, what my thinking process is, and if you then want to kind of copy that and apply the same logic to your own builds, then by all means do so. This does mean that this uh, Let's Play will be more focused on people that have already played the game for a bit. They might have been have more experience with the game, kind of know what they're building and why they're building things. Um, if you are new to the game, you can still perfectly follow along, um, especially if you want to play on the exact same planet as I am playing and the same galaxy that I'm playing in. You can use the cluster seed that's on the screen right now. You put that in when you start your new game and you will get this exact map that I'm playing on uh, and you can play along if you want to. Uh, but if you're really new to the game, I do recommend that you check out my other Let's Play series. That's the Buy the Book Let's Play that I will link in the description below where I use blueprints as well. It's a little bit of a different type of blueprint, but it's really focused on me explaining the basics of the game as well. So it's a little bit easier if you just watch those first few episodes at least to kind of get a feel for the game, if this is the first time you're playing it. So without further ado, let's start up our game. Let's fly off to the first planet. Uh, before we do that, actually, I haven't actually checked out this map at all or this, this system at all. So I see we have several uh, giants, blue of uh, uh, red giants. Uh, we have some neutron stars, or actually singular star. We have a black hole all the way in the back over here, so that's going to be interesting in terms of the resource we find there. Um, yeah, there's not much to say, I guess, based on what we're seeing here. Do we have any O-type stars? We have one, only one. But I like O-type stars; they tend to be quite good for energy production anyway uh, we can make it work it doesn't matter uh, it's going to be an interesting run let's see how our first system looks now we have to check around a little bit i see a nice blue gas giant no other planets just yet I turned off the tutorial, by the way, in the prologue, in case you're wondering why you don't hear the very awesome tutorial voice talking. I saw some planets here in the back. Not sure where they went. I can't check out the map just yet. But it's actually refreshing because our last Let's Play had a blue gas giant. And apparently now we have a green one. So it's at least going to look a little bit different. And of course, as always, you start on a kind of Earth-like first planet. It's uh, it's always like that. And we should have some hopefully interesting planets around us as well. 
We don't have any other planets in the orbit of our gas giant, uh, by the looks of it. Which is not that uncommon. Um, what I'm actually going to do, you don't want... I, at least I don't assume that you want me to walk through the entire first part of the game again. Where I get the first few production facilities going. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the blueprint from my last episode for the starting base because it's very organized. It actually already has perfect ratios. Um, and we're going to use that to kind of kickstart our production. Before we skip to that, let's quickly check out where our starting position on this planet is and kind of what it looks like. So, by the looks of it, we have some stone clothes. Of course, we have our little copper and iron deposits over here. And if I can get control so I can zoom out. There we go. Oh, we have sounds for the tutorials now. That's actually new. Annoying, but new. Okay, so we have... Oh, actually, we have a lot of stone over here. Um, hence... Oh, here's some coal... Oh, more coal. Okay, so nice. All right, uh, so be right back while I build our initial kind of starting base. All right, so we set up our little, little mini base over here. We have the perfect ratio of things going into the core item production. So we have some circuit boards being made, magnetic coils being made, some belts and some sorters. This is not really necessarily part of our little setup, but if you've watched my previous playthrough, uh, you will find it's very useful. And of course, it's, it's very clean. So I clean it up a little bit, um, keep it neat, including my, my power actually. I actually try to keep my power a little neat as well. Uh, I also set up a little mini base here for the production of stone and glass. So we have everything we need, not, not in huge amounts, but Oh, that's not what I meant to do. We have everything we need to basically get our initial production going. Now, we do want to start actually setting up our blue research. I'm currently doing it manually because, well, not doing anything else. But, of course, we want to set up a proper setup for a maximum amount of blue science production in such a way that we can easily scale it up if we want to. Um, but we also don't have to kind of look after it for a while. So I'm going to scout out for a location and while I do that, be right back. Okay, I found a pretty nice spot, actually pretty close to where we started. So our starting base is over here. Um, it's currently night, so yeah. And oh, there's some coal over here to help me get my energy back and then there's a pretty nice iron vein and copper vein nicely conveniently located close together over here and quite a lot of building space over here and we will need the building space so yeah sounds good now let's see what do we want to do my goal for this first build is to make a full belt uh, mark one belt to be precise of blue science um why a full belt well it's the maximum amount we can produce on one belt right now. It's quite convenient in that way. And a full belt easily scales up as well. So if at some point, for example, we would want to fill a full Mark II belt, all we need to do is build that twice. And then we can fill up a Mark II belt, for example. Now, science. Um, so if we check the recipe, apologies there. So if we put it down, let's say, where do we want? We need some room to build, let's say, over here. So if we look at the recipe, we have blue science over here. And blue science will need, is only one per three seconds. So we actually need to build 18 of these in order to get a full um, six per second, which is the maximum amount you can put on a belt. And if you're wondering about the math, what I usually do is I first multiply the um, amount with the building ratio. So in this case, it's one blue science per three seconds. So we need three of these buildings to get it down to one per second. And we need six per second. So if we need three for one per second, then we need six times as much of so three times six. So 18 of these to get to six per second. 
So if we do that, that means we can stack these up to three at the moment. So that means we need nine of these. Uh, no, not nine of these. We need six of these. And then if we stack them up to three, there's nine and there's another nine. So that's 18 of them altogether. Now, of course, we need them to feed these things um, two different things. So we need to feed them circuit boards and we need to feed them magnetic coils. So again, if you check the recipe and from this point on, it's actually quite straightforward. So if we need um, six per second in terms of blue science, and you can see the ratio is exactly one to one for the different um, inputs. So six blue science per second means we also need six coils per second and six circuit boards per second. Now, if we then check out the recipe for those, if you look at the magnetic coils, we in order to get one per second, well, it's actually already two per second if you just fill one up. Uh, we just said we need six per second. So in, you first, your first response would probably be you need three of those, right? So three of these with the recipe that's two per second gives you six per second. Now, Yes, but no, actually, because the building speed of a Mark 1 um, assembling machine is only 0.75 speed. So it's actually producing at 75% speed of what the recipe says it will do. So that means instead of three, we actually need four. So putting those down for a second, uh, and just reiterating on that so instead of two per second we will actually be producing at 75 percent speed so we are producing one and a half per second so in order to get six we need four four of these uh, the circuit board the recipe actually works exactly the same way so we will need four of those as well so just putting those down for a moment there we go I'm putting these down for a moment this is all the production we need in that regard now in a similar way, and I already did the math for you, so you don't have to sit through me calculating it every time. Uh, we're going to need nine magnets. We're going to need a full belt or six uh, copper ore. And we're also going to need six iron ore. And if we have all of that, then that will <clears throat> require in terms of magnets. So let me show you the recipe. We will need nine of those, but they're only producing at a uh, one per one and a half second so that means that this is actually six and this requires this six per second and it also requires six ore per second so it's a full belt of ore for the magnets it's actually going to be a full belt of ore for the copper and it's going to be a full belt of ore for the iron it's like the developers thought about this so this is the three full belts of inputs resulting in one full belt of output uh, specifically the blue science going in and only raw or or sorry raw or going in and only uh, blue science coming out now what i still need to do is actually line this up in such a way that's a little neater than it is right now so let's do that let's get rid of all of this um let's assume for a moment here just to to keep track of this so let's say we want to have these items going in over here that means that we are going to put actually let's let's do it like this one two three four and those will require two inputs so let's have the inputs go in here and then let's have the output go there. Now, let's put the magnetic coils on the outside. And let's put the copper on the inside. And this will be the um, coils, I'm sorry. And then the second thing we need is the circuit boards. So let's assume those are coming in over there. And then we need four of those. 
So let's keep it nice and symmetric. Of course, this is the wrong recipe, so let's swap that around. Let's copy the recipe. There we go. We have already the copper coming in over there, so all we need now is the iron coming in over here. So we need iron over there. Now, like I said, that means we need quite a lot of res uh, stuff over here. So that means we are going to require a full belt. Let's, uh, let's work from the inside for a moment. So we need a full belt of copper ore over here. So if I'm going to put this here, does that work? Yeah, that works. Sure, why not? So just thinking out loud there for a moment, but you will see what I mean in a second. So what we're actually going to do, this is going to be the magnets. This is going to be the copper ore. That means we also need to input the copper ore. So like that. And this is really the part of the game where I want my drones to speed up because I get used to this past ones from the other game. Um, like so, we also still need to input the iron. So let's do that like so. Uh, let's mark it so we don't forget what we're doing. And then last but not least, we need the actual iron production as well. The iron bars that is. And we can do it like that. And we of course need to put the inputs for that as well. Almost out of copper. Uh, copper. Cool. Anyway, I'll, I'll fix that in a moment, but let's see. So that means that I think this looks pretty neat. We have the all the inputs in over here, so we can connect those up. We have the outputs here. And then finally, of course, we have the uh, production over here that will need a little longer belts, considering we actually want to put it in on both sides. And there we go. And that works. Now, I'm going to hook all of this up to sorters. I am going to make sure it's powered. And then we can hit the on button, so to speak, and see our research nice and fast ticking up. So, be right back. Alrighty. So, let's see. We have our production all set up. We have the 18 blue science, science facilities up and running. We also are well, not running yet because I saved that for you. Uh, we have the research queued up where I basically built the same amount of research facilities as well because of course we do need that science to go somewhere. And let's see what happens if we fire this up. So let's connect these up. Everything should be powered. So it should be interesting because if I messed up, this is going to be a bit of a mess. But all the production is starting up. We have a nice inflow of copper coming in here. We have the iron coming in over there and the magnets on the top. So far so good. As you can see, everything is actually in production. And like you can see over here, the iron is struggling to reach this last one, but it's, that is actually supposed to happen because we should have exactly enough in and output over here. And we're actually a little bit low on power, even though I built a whole farm over there. So that's why you see these things stacking up, because the power is not balanced just yet. Um, but as you can see, we will have a steady influx now of all the material that we need. And if we build some more power, that should fix this problem in terms of getting less production than we actually intended. So Quite power hungry, a big build like this, apparently. So. And as you can see, as more of the production is firing up, it's actually demanding even more power. So I underestimated the amount of power needed there. 
And we got an achievement for that as well. Apparently I haven't actually played with achievements enabled yet. But anyway, if once I fix the power you'll see this is going uh, pretty smoothly. And yeah, this looks pretty awesome if you ask me. We have this uh, whole production going up. So this is demanding one and a half iron per second. Assuming the production is up to full speed. And yeah, this is going to uh, be awesome. All right, be right back fixing the power. Alrighty, and there we are. It's all hooked up, it's all ready to go. And I actually went a bit further than what I just showed you when I was building, so I couldn't resist. I mean, this is the perfection run. This is where we want to be neat and orderly and things like that. So we might as well pave the planet, right? So I went ahead and did just that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a nice little um, natural looking, well, natural looking concrete. I'm not sure that there's such a thing. But at least a little bit of um, uh, easy on the ice type of uh, blueprint. But I am going to use these lines around the specific builds to really make it easy to identify what we're building, where we're building it. And in this case, I'm using the blue because this is our build for the blue science. Now, like I said, and as you can see, these belts are going off. I am going to use this build for two things. And I'm just kind of cheating a little bit because, of course, we want to be using this stuff for the blue science. But honestly, we've built so much blue science that we won't need all of this production. So I went ahead and built a mall to go along with this. Now, as you can see, this mall over here, it has all the usual buildings that we need for the early game. But I... I think I redesigned this like five different times while I was building it. So uh, once you see my playtime, you might be a bit scared. But don't worry, if you just put this down as a blueprint, you'll be done in no time. Um, but yeah, what I did is the basics, uh, with the exception, if you watch my previous Let's Play, I actually made the cogs going out, uh, for, uh, coming in from the outside. I included them in the build now. So you literally only need to put in stone iron ore so not even iron bars just iron uh, as well as some circuit boards and um, mechanical coils and this is what we are getting from the other builds and I, I really recommend you do this because initially you will have way more blue science production if you do this than you actually need so you might as well use the overflow for your buildings uh, these buildings will be filled up pretty fast as usual I'm only putting in one stack in each um, storage unit so um, at least initially so this will be filling up in no time and then all the production goes back into your science again uh, to be honest by then the science is probably already done so yeah the uh, other materials that these this mall needs are actually included in the build so i have the iron right here and again we're using perfect ratio so um, half of the iron production is actually going into the steel production um, because of course, of course we do need some steel but even not a lot we also need glass and stone and uh, again not much of each but we are basically using half a belt of stone to go into the stone area and then we need some glass for the higher tire building so we have those over here and I actually forgot to hook those up so let me go and do that be right back all right so everything's actually hooked up now uh, at least with the sorters so let's see what happens if we actually hook all of this up to resources we should see everything working and i actually didn't test yet maybe i should have done that but i think uh, it should work now so let's see we can see all the magnets starting up we have the copper production starting up we have the iron production starting up as well all looking pretty good so far And this is going to split off now, but I think we'll see a pretty high speed blue science production any moment now. And of course, this is uh, going into the uh, mall over here, which I haven't actually hooked up yet. I did that intentionally, so you can see the full speed of the science in a moment. Of course, this does need to kind of buffer up first, so you all can already see the first blue science coming in. I made a little buffer storage unit here, so we, if, in case we have overflow, well, we will have overflow in a few minutes from now because this will be firing through the research we have available really quick. Um, 
so it stacks up a little bit and we, we, can, we actually have some overproduction that we can put to use later on. Um, as you can see, this is completely buffed up now, stacked up now because I haven't connected it yet. So we should see the full speed of blue science production coming up. As you can see, we are actually almost utilizing the first half of our production already. And the whole point of this is that once this is actually fully buffered up, we will have all 18 of these science facilities actually producing blue science. And as you can see, the first half is lit up, the second column of three already, this should start overflowing any moment now. You can see the speed of research really picking up now. And it will take a little bit for all the science to reach the back one. Uh, as you can see, it's already flowing through now. And that is intentional because we're using perfect ratios. It will take time for this system to get f completely fired up. And as you can see, it's now reaching the last tire tower already. And there we go. Um, again, if we, if we gave, give this a few more minutes, it will start firing up for the entire nine towers. But however, we also want to make sure we use our little uh, mall over here. Because we will need productions for the rest of our uh, base building, of course. So we're hooking everything up here as well. And then we should see the same thing happening here. So we have iron being made here. Uh, about half of that iron is going to flow through into the buildings uh, on the top. And then the other half is going to be transformed into steel that is basically used by the buildings down here. Now, similarly, we have some uh, stone going all around. This will take a while for actually to reach all buildings because of course there's a lot of buildings using stone and we only have half a belt of production. Um, not a big deal. It will, as you can see, it's already reaching the uh, thermal power plant over here and it won't be long until the first stone reaches the last buildings. The main use of stone is actually foundations in my previous builds. And as you can see, I took foundations out of this. And uh, the reason for that is because I want to use a lot of foundations and I want to make sure we have an optimal production of that. As you can see the um, overflow of the coils and circuit boards from our um, science facilities coming in. So that's really useful. And this is now all starting up and starting to build. Now, as you can see, the top buildings are not really being produced just yet. That's because they need cogs and the cogs are currently mostly being used in the production of our uh, belts. I will limit the belts a little bit because we don't really need more than 900. Maybe not even that at this point in the game. So let's keep them to 600. That will be more than enough for now. And as you can see, this is all working. It's not working at top speed. It doesn't have to. Uh, again, this is just our mall. But as soon as we are done with the blue research, that will stack up and we will get even more production in terms of boards and coils. But to be honest, the main bottleneck will probably be the stone and the iron and that will be flowing in. So basically, as long as we make sure that um, this facility up here receives copper and iron ore and this facility down here receives iron ore and stone, this will always be building. This is the only thing we need to worry about, getting the base materials in here. Uh, no worries about bottlenecks for anything else in between and of course this is a very simple build but I'm just trying to show you the the, the theory behind this run. We want to uh, avoid basically any type of bottleneck that can be created in the game if we can avoid it other than the base materials. So as long as we have base materials all our builds should be working. Now of course all this concrete needs to come from somewhere. So that is where I made a build in the back of our base. Uh, a little further far off because I needed stone and I needed iron ore. And we had a nice combination of those over here. Um, I could have maybe built it closer. But this iron vein was already being heavily taxed. We need it for these two production areas. So I figured why not put it over here. Again, I used a really nice amount of concrete here to kind of show what I'm doing. I am using the orange to basically indicate that these are building productions or other general uh, item productions. Basically anything that is not geared towards science or an, an, another specific purpose will be marked with this kind of in, uh, under construction type of orange. 
as you can see here this is quite a neat build it has three foundations uh, assemblers non-stop working as you can see uh, it's very well balanced as you can see it just um, turns on and off for a second there um, that is because um, yeah it's it's kind of resource starved but um, yeah, as you can see it only blocks for like half a second and then it uh, continues again and that's all because of the perfect ratios now for the nitpickers among you uh, if you do your math on this build you will see that I'm actually slightly over producing foundations here that's because they have a very annoying ratio um, at least in the early game when you have the tier 1 assemblers you either need to really overdo the production um, really go with, with like four or five six of these and then you need several belts of inputs and um, so basically this could be producing 2.25 foundations per second but it will only produce two per second because of the materials going in but the nice thing about the materials going in that it is exactly one belt of iron and one belt of stone and as you can see this is not stacking up at all because everything is being used so again that's where what we're aiming for kind of perfect ratios nothing going to waste nothing stacking up unless of course the build is done but uh yeah there we go all right so um really neat um to be honest uh this is way more fun than i thought it would be i thought it would be fun but i actually spent way too much time uh kind of optimizing the builds and making them pretty then i threw in the um, concrete and it became even more fun to do so i'm really looking forward to the rest of this series i hope you do too so if you do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see the new series coming in and if you have any suggestions comments or anything else you want to share please leave it below in the comments all right see you in the next one